Are you frustrated with your slow progress to Spanish fluency? When you join the Spanish Con Salsa Fluency Club, you'll have everything you need to start speaking Spanish with confidence. That includes engaging courses that teach you the Spanish language and all about Latino culture through music, weekly group conversations so that you can practice speaking Spanish in a comfortable, non-judgmental environment, support from a certified language coach to make sure you stay on track to meet your goals week after week, and so much more. You'll see a noticeable improvement in your conversational fluency in your first 90 days. For more information on how you can join and make this year the year you get fluent in Spanish, go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash join. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash join. Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Mari. Hola, bienvenidos al episodio 106. Welcome to episode 106 of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Thank you so much to everyone who participated in our Spanish fluency goal setting challenge over the past week. I really have enjoyed helping everyone with their goals. And for those of you who attended our live workshop last Thursday, you know, I was able to give you some specific feedback on how you could tweak your goals to make them more effective. So I hope that uh, you all found that helpful. And again, thank you for taking the time to join me. And for those of you who are in our Facebook group, and if you're not, you can go to LearnSpanishConSalsa.com slash Facebook uh, to join our group. Uh, but you know, I've also been hopping in there. I've done a couple of Facebook Lives. I've been giving you all feedback as well on specific goals as it relates to listening comprehension, grammar, conversation skills, and all of that. So if you missed the goal setting challenge, you go, what is she talking about? Or <laughs> you started at the beginning of last week, but you didn't quite finish you can still catch up. So over the next week, you will still have access to all five days of the challenge. Just go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash 2021. So SpanishConSalsa.com slash 2021. You still have about a week. We'll keep it up so that you can access all the videos with all the instructions and activities uh, so you can plan out uh, your next week and your next month and your next quarter and your next year <laughs> as you uh, progress towards Spanish fluency. So make sure you check it out. I will still be popping into the Facebook group to give some more feedback this week for those of you who have some catching up to do. And congratulations to everyone who's won prizes uh, for uh, participating in the challenge. I hope you all enjoy that as well. Before we get started with this week's episode, I want to share a listener review that we received on Apple Podcasts. And this is from the username Siempre El Estudiante, and it is a five-star review, so gracias. And it says, just what I wanted. One reason for wanting to learn a language is to get a deeper understanding of the culture, whatever that might be. Well, guess what? Spanish con salsa's got it. It's the perfect match for my love of salsa music and my motivation for learning the language. Gracias siempre al estudiante for the five-star review. And don't forget, you can always leave us a review. Just click on the link in the description of the podcast or on the show notes page, and you'll be able to leave a review in Apple Podcasts. So gracias siempre al estudiante. We are continuing our Black Expat series with a conversation with Kayla Rodriguez, and she's going to tell you all about life in the Dominican Republic. Now, you might remember hearing this name before because Kayla has been on the podcast before. Uh, she was on episode 35, so you can go back and listen to that uh, if you want to hear my first uh, interview with Kayla. But in this episode, we talk all about how she decided to move to the Caribbean. We talk a little bit about what the cost of living is like and if it's really safe for expats in the DR. Uh, I know that was a concern. You know, people always ask, you know, it was the number one question I got in our Facebook group when I asked, like, what do you want to know about living abroad? Everyone is concerned about safety, um, especially people moving from the U.S. So it's um, something that we touch on and we talk about safety on the island. 
Now, Kayla is a member of Spanish Con Salsa, our membership and our group coaching community. And when she first joined, she was really shy about speaking Spanish. And it's been so great to watch her grow in her confidence with the language. You can go back and listen to episode 35 when she first appeared on the podcast and was just getting comfortable with traveling abroad on her own. And now she's actually made the move overseas. I hope her story will inspire you and stick around to the end of the episode if you want to hear more about how you can join the Spanish Con Salsa Fluency Club and get the support you need to get fluent in Spanish this year. So with that, let's get started with my conversation with Kayla. Hola, Kayla. Bienvenida otra vez a Podcast Learn Spanish Con Salsa. Hola, Tamara. ¿Cómo estás? I was going to say, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? <laughs> Dominican Spanish already. Come on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to have you back. Uh, I know it's been a little while since we've spoken. I know last time we spoke, you had just taken a trip to Puerto Rico. And I was actually in an expat group uh, for people who live in Dominican Republic on Facebook because I was looking for people to interview for the podcast for the uh, Black Expat series and you popped up like, hey, I moved to DR. And I was like, what? <laughs> we have to catch up. So I'm um, yeah. glad you could join us again. And you're in DR right now. So yes, um, tell us a little bit about how you ended up moving. How did you go from just kind of visiting to actually deciding that you were going to actually move and live in Dominican Republic? Um, so the last time that I had came before I, I got I came the end of July of this year, but I came also last year for Christmas and then left like after, a week after New Year's. So when I was here for Christmas, um, they were just I'm, I, I call them close family because I'm always with them. And they were like, well, since you're always here, I mean, friends even in the States were saying that you're, you're always back and forth, like every two months, you're always back and forth from DR. Why don't you just get a place here? And it, it's always been in the back of my mind, but it was just, I didn't know how to go about it to make that move. And can I see myself living over here? Because it is different from Puerto Rico where Puerto Rico, that was like my first place that I, I did want to move was Puerto Rico. But over here, since it was more, I feel like DR is more laid back than D, uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico to me is more Americanized, it's expensive. But I don't know, it's just something about Dominican Republic where like the people are just so, it, it's my happy spot. It, it Everybody's just so giving and loving and they wanna help you. And I don't know, it's just, and then when I would leave DR and go back to the States, I would just be like, it's like I was homesick. Like I was wow. like, like kind of, oh, let me book my next, when, when can I book my next trip to come over here? So um, when I had left in January, me and my son, because I had brought him for the first time here, when I had left, I just went home and thought about it, did some research. I actually joined like some expat groups like on Facebook for um, people that were um, transitioning to move over here or had, had already moved over to the DR. Uh, mostly like people from the United States. So um, I was just trying to do my homework and research on that. And then I was like, okay, you know, people, a person that I knew over here, she's American. She actually lives in Cabarete. She and her son had moved over here and she was just giving me information about how to go about it. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'll come back in March, but COVID had hit. So that held me up, but right. I ended up making it, you know, back over here in July. And I found a, a nice apartment in Santiago and yeah, just to get everything settled in there where it was comfortable and just to be here for a longer time to know that this is where I want to be, you know, where it's just, you know, sometimes you go on vacation, vacation is different because you're enjoying yourself and, right. you know, it, but to actually live here, I just needed to make sure that that was something that I needed to do. Cause I know like Dominican Republic is completely different from the US. Like people do things differently. One thing I've had to learn is, I guess you can say is patience. <laughs> because <laughs> they are definitely- Caribbean time. Oh, Dominican time. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'll be there to connect your internet at 2.30. And it's like almost five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, it was just, yeah, just just getting used to, you know, a different culture and right. the, the way that they, you know, live over here. That's great. I mean, so you decided to take the leap. And I think that um, something you mentioned that I think 
and also just kind of how I found out that you had moved even is um, through Facebook groups, right? Like there are Facebook groups for expats for like almost any country. So if you're thinking about moving somewhere, that is a great resource to like look for a Facebook group for people who have already moved or in that process as well, because you can learn information from people who are actually there instead of just thinking you're going to base it on one or two trips. Like you said, vacation is different, right? So when you actually get that, you know, like, like stuff like you just mentioned, like, okay, how do you get internet service? Right. Cause that's like a thing people want to know about, but you can really use those groups as like resources um, Mm -hmm. to help you kind of investigate more when you're trying to figure out those like day-to-day things that you might not think about before you actually have to move. So, Oh yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I do want to ask you a question about safety because that's the number one question. So I put it in our Facebook group. I said, okay, what do you want to know about moving, right? If you want to move to the Dominican Republic or any other Spanish speaking country. Mm-hmm. And like the number one question I got from people is like, is it safe? Right? Like, I think we have this conception being from the US and you know, the way we deal with crime, the way we look at crime may be different than other places. And I know there's this fear that people have with the unfamiliar because when you don't know, you you automatically just go to fear right until you actually have the experience so in terms of you know the area that you live in how would you say it is uh, in terms of safety especially as someone coming from the U.S. and kind of being seen as this person maybe that has like more money and resources than like the average Dominican because you came from the U.S. like how safe do you feel as an American moving to DR? I have to say I definitely feel safe here. Um, from Europe to the United States, I've, I've came across bad experiences when it comes to safety. So me being a female traveling back and forth from DR for the last two, two and a half, it's been since 2018. So two, two and a half years that I've been traveling back in here, back and forth here. The first time I came, I didn't come by myself. I actually came with my friend who's from Colombia, who is Colombian. But when I now, she only came with me that one time. And by the, um, besides the time I came with my son, I come back and forth here by myself. I travel from Illinois here all the time by myself. In Santiago, where you know I'm staying, I, I could walk around the neighborhood. Um, I, people say hello, they greet me. It's, it's very safe. I think if I would have had a bad experience, you know, from the the few years that I've been coming back here, I couldn't do it. I I would not be coming back and forth like I have because I'm just, I'm just gonna say like with anxiety, you know, just thinking, oh my gosh, you know, what's gonna happen, you know, if I just walk around the corner, you know? Um, So I have, it's very safe. I've not had any bad experience. I haven't heard of any expats that are living here. I know a few um, women that have made the move and are living here now in DR. And they too, like they, they're like, they always feel safe. They've never had any bad experiences. One thing I could say with me going, I've been to Cuba, I've been to Puerto Rico and they do the same thing is the men will hiss at you. They will say, hey, you know, hey mommy. Like if I'm walking down the street, like the men will, you know, call, they'll, they'll call for you, like try and be flirtatious and talk to you. But if you just be like, oh, you yeah. know, don't yeah. say anything or just keep doing whatever you're doing. They leave you alone. It's not like they harass you. At least I've never had that. They don't harass you or they just keep it moving. They'll just say whatever they, they say and then they, they go. But as far as feeling, even though I'm from the U.S. and they know, people know I'm not from here. They don't pay me any mind. They're just very friendly. They actually be like, oh, if you need anything, please let me know. I'm just right around the corner. I'm just right here. Something that I've never experienced in the States, me living on a military installation too, everybody keeps to themselves. Mm-hmm. Nobody, the neighbors, new neighbors move and they don't come and introduce themselves. And you know, I'm in a very close knit military community, but here in the DR, it's completely different. Everybody is just like family. They, they all stick together. You know, they, it's, yeah, I have to say I've, I feel more safer here than any other place to be honest. Yes. Wow, that, that is uh, interesting to hear. And I'm glad to get that from you, from someone who has gone back and forth for several years. Because I think a lot of the press, I think maybe, I don't know, a year or two ago now, everything's been about COVID right now. It seems like that was like 10 years ago, right? But it wasn't that long ago where people were talking about tourists, like having trouble in like some of their resorts. And so I know that DR had like, a bad uh some bad press for a little bit people are like oh you don't want to go there because oh, such and such could happen to you yeah. so to hear you say that you've gone back and forth 
for several years and you know being somebody who is you know especially females right like when you travel alone as a female you you definitely don't want to go somewhere where you don't feel safe so I think that our listeners will be happy to hear that you know firsthand experience that you know, not to believe the hype, right? Like, don't believe everything that you no. read. Hey, I'm not the type to jump on a plane and just go travel by myself. Um, like, I, I, I suffer from anxiety, and for me, I have to be comfortable. Like, I have to be comfortable in any place or any, like, that's just not like me. Even my family was shocked, like, wow, you're really getting on a plane, just jumping on a plane and going, like, over there by <laughs> yourself, and then, you know, I'll go, um, this, I rented a car since I've been here on this trip. So I'm driving over here. And I used to be like, I could never drive in DR, you know, friends of the family. Like, I was like, no, don't come pick me up. I'm going to head straight to Santiago and just do what I have to do. And I did it. I, I've been doing a lot of things on my own. I just come and go as I please, which usually, uh, the close friends of mine, um, the boys, they'll be the ones to take me to the store. No, we'll take you to the store. They want to do everything for me. But I'm like, if I'm going to be here, like I have to learn how to do things for myself too right you know even though I have my family here but me just being here you know right now by myself like they they always want to do things for you they want to make sure you like you're fed they don't want me to be alone in my apartment in Santiago they want to be with me to make sure that I'm safe that's just the way they are they're just very because I'm like I don't have this in the states I just do what I need to do but over here right. they need to know like everywhere I am even if I'm sitting on the front porch here in La Vega like Oh, they, they're always checking up on me and I'm like I'm a, I'm a grown woman like I could take care of myself but that, <laughs> that's just them being protective because they know I'm not from here and they're not saying that anything they never said oh someone will do something to you but it's just them just their culture just making sure I'm fine and not to walk around with my phone because I like to take video and post video so people can see parts of um Dominican Republic but you know stuff like that you got to be careful they say that people will snatch your phone and they'll run um but besides that I mean it's safe I mean just a lot of you know people around here they don't have a lot of things so if they see somebody with something fancy yeah they you know just normal they just want it but as far as the crime and as far as anybody being murdered or anything like that no 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 it's just something that I've never heard of or experienced since I've been here. They really are protective, I want to say, of the expats. Because mm-hmm. I guess that's the way the, the money comes into the country with people that come and go be here visiting. So they really are good with, like, expats, the Dominicans. They are very friendly with expats. I've never had a bad experience or heard of anybody having a bad experience with the D- Dominicans. The Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast is sponsored by Shape and Foster. Shape and Foster is a lifestyle development app that provides monthly actionable insight from six experts in mental health, financial planning, nutrition, fitness, yoga, and a life coach. It's a one-stop shop for self-improvement. The app provides a proactive and informed approach to improving your mental well-being, by enabling you to build practices and habits. Lifestyle development is about enhancing your quality of life by improving awareness, identity, and potential in one community of actionable insight. Learn the six pillars essential to a healthy heart and healthy mind in one unique app. Visit www.shapeandfoster.com for your free 14-day trial. That's www.shapeandfoster.com. So, so you mentioned something about, you know, people, they're not having a lot. And I know that, um, you know, Dominican Republic shares the island with Haiti, right? So Haiti is definitely um, not, you know, a very rich country. And Dominican Republic, I'd probably say, is maybe better off than Haiti, but not too far behind, especially depending on where you are. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, given that and sort of your experience moving there, and having folks look at you, knowing that you're an expat, knowing that you're not from there. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about sort of living in a community where you know that people don't have a lot? And then, you know, how does that translate to for you for like, how is the cost of living? You know, I know it's obviously lower compared to the US, but like, are there certain things that um, you didn't expect, like that might actually cost more there or just because of you know, the situation you're in because you're in on an island, there's certain things that you can't get as easily. Like Amazon Prime is not coming, right? So like in oh, DR. That's the so. thing. <laughs> 
And then when I came here and saw how you could get an apartment, like a three bedroom apartment with two bathrooms for, man, like for me, my rent, and people say that's a lot, like a lot of Dominicans, I'm paying like 348 for an apartment in Santiago. And a lot of people are like, you could cut, but I'm like, that's like nothing compared to places. Anywhere like, in the US. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's so cheap here. There are things in the store uh, when I go shopping, like food shopping. Food, I guess it just depends the store that you shop in. Like I always shop in a store over here called Jumbo. Um, and the prices are different depending what you want to get. Um, I like like my muscle milk and I like my, um, I forgot the other protein shake. <laughs> the protein over here is very expensive very expensive compared to me just buying one in the states so it, it is different things the furniture uh I could, I could go down the list like furniture a tv over here um i know when doing my move i was warned like bring all your kitchen appliances and stuff like that over here ship them because they're going to be expensive but <laughs> the thing that i kind of was taking for granted is like I say, like again, I say my Dominican family, they would say, oh, this is expensive, but for us, it's not expensive. Like they would be like, oh, don't get this, this is too expensive. But for me, I'm like, that's cheap. But because they don't have a lot, or I guess like the, the difference between the peso and the dollar, for them, it just, it would seem like a lot. Like the food over here, I would say the food is cheap. I mean, there's always, even if you want to eat out on the street, there's always food going around. And then people like the Dominicans sharing like the food too. Like food, like rice and beans, everything. You could get that for so cheap, especially at the, the Comados that are on the corner. Yeah, um, that's like the uh, the corner store, right? Yeah, the corner store. And I didn't, I didn't realize since I've been here, like how convenient it is. Cause I'm just like, oh, I need more toothpaste. And I'm like, well, now I have to go all the jumbo. No, a model has like a toothpaste, your toilet paper, anything that you need, your rice, your beans, water, refresco, like anything. Everything's at that little corner called model where you could just take five steps and I'm there. So that's something that I like about being over here. Whereas, you know, usually you have to jump in the car and go to the store depending where you live, unless the, right. the corner store is like right there. But I like how there's a Komodo on each corner. But as far as price, um, I would just have to say just things like a toaster or a TV, like uh, electronics are just very expensive here. Food, no, you could, you could get by on food and moving here like i'm not trying to live a um extravagant lifestyle like i've never lived in an apartment before so coming from a house living in an apartment is different but the apartments are nice they're comfortable um but i i'm, I'm just i know people i, I don't want to say i'm trying to live like a local but just a, a comfortable easy life i don't need to have all this what I have in the States, I'm just trying to leave, leave that American, um, mindset. American mindset yeah. back, back in the States. Cause I come over here and I'm just like, Oh, you know, just question some things like why in the States, this is, but I have to be, okay, I'm not in the States. So right. I have to get away from that, that mindset. But, um, yeah. And, and just as far as me always ordering stuff online, that's just going to be a big difference too. Cause I'm always shopping online for things. And <laughs> right. The clothes here are different from the clothes in the States. I feel like, uh, I haven't shopped for any clothes here, but it's just a different type of clothing, a different type of style over here. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're like as it's an, an adjustment. <laughs> it's it's going to, it's going to definitely be an adjustment. Um, like you said, there's no Amazon Prime. Um, certain things that could be shipped over here, they have to be like a certain weight or it could cost a lot for things to be shipped over. So from what I have, um, from the expats I have spoken to that I've been living here, it's like twice a year, three times a year, whenever they can make a trip back to the States. They just basically stock up on everything that they need and then bring it over here. That's like things that they don't have over here because some things that they have over here that you would usually buy in the United States, it can be more. You're used to just going to the mailbox, putting a stamp on something and sending it off, but like you can't really do that in DR, right? 
No, and it's because I always had packages coming to my house in the States. So, it, yeah, that's just like a big thing. Like, man, why can't, and before I've tried to mail things here, you know, things for, you know, friends over here too. And they, they look at me like, uh, I'm like, what's your address? Like, what's your, the postal code? And they're looking at, what's the house number? Like, what's the number of your house? They're like, we don't have a house number. And I'm like, Como? Like, what do you mean you don't have a house number? So yeah, it is a complete difference. And they say like, even sometimes the packages, if, if you're lucky enough to get a package delivered over here, if you send something, sometimes it can go to the wrong address too. So it's like, you just gotta be, be careful of, yeah. Yeah, you have to get a, a private service. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So I'm yeah. just like, oh, that's something different. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Spanish. So I know we were talking earlier before we started recording and you said that um, where you are in La Vega, nobody speaks English, so you've had to speak Spanish. So how do you feel, one, like if someone was gonna move there and they don't know any Spanish at all, like, can you get by? if you speak English or uh, do you feel like you definitely have to have some foundation of Spanish before you even consider moving? Yes, I would say that you definitely could get by moving here if you don't know English because I have met some expats, especially in the Sosua area, who are Americans and they've been living here like some of them have been living here more than three years and have not learned any Spanish. And some of them are like, I just don't want to learn Spanish. And I'm thinking like, oh, like why are you there? And not, <laughs> and not want to learn any Spanish. And they're like, well, the Dominicans here in the area all speak English anyway, but not all of them in Sosua, I've been in Sosua, not all of the Dominicans do speak English. It's just, you can live here and be be okay with not speaking Spanish. But I wanna say it depends where you live. Um, for me in Santiago, I haven't bumped into nobody yet that I know that speaks really good English. And I never try and speak English with any of the locals here. I just don't. Um, La Vega, definitely not um, where I am right now. Definitely not. Um, the thing is, is that they know, you know, obviously from my accent and the way that I speak Spanish that, cause there's some words that I do come across that when they speak and I'm just like, I don't understand like some of the slang. And that's why right. I'd be like, oh, my little slang book. Cause I have it on my phone. I'm like, let me go to my Dominican one-on-one <laughs> uh, <laughs> one -on -one and go look at the word. And I'm like, ah, and it's just so funny because the words that are in the um, Dominican Spanish, uh, Spanish con salsa book, a lot of the slang that they do use here are in that book and it's just oh, like great. It's just so it's just it's just great and i have it downloaded on my phone so sometimes if i come across a word i'll go look i'm like can you say you know can you say that word again and then i'll go look and i'm like oh that's what it means but um oh, that's awesome <laughs> yeah but um when they do know because they'll ask me where i'm from and i'll say it because some people are like oh you're not dominican i'm like no and they're like ah and then they want you to you know, help them with their English. So, like, I'll help you with, you know, your English. You help me with the right, right. But um, any not to get off the subject, you can live here and not speak Spanish. But I would say, if you do plan to live here, definitely learn Spanish because it would just be so easier, and you'll enjoy the culture more. You'll enjoy the the people, and it's just I feel like it's just easier for me if I didn't come across Spanish con salsa. Uh, to, you know, take the Dominican uh, course, then I would have been lost. And then just being being surrounded by people, you know, that only speak Spanish, that helps me to pick up my Spanish. You know, just sitting there listening, taking it all in, because before I would be nervous to speak. That was my thing when I first started Spanish con salsa and even to when I first came over here and even was going to Puerto Rico, like I'll always be quiet and I always be like, I hope this person doesn't say anything to me or want to start a conversation. <laughs> that hola, como estas? And then nada más, like nothing. Right. <laughs> but you know, then people, you know, when they see that you're, oh, she doesn't look familiar. She must, you know, we know you're not from here. They want to get to know you and speak more. So um, yeah, I that was my, my thing was just to be nervous and just 
low-key. Like, I just hope no one doesn't approach and speak to me. But now I'm just... <laughs> like, I speak and, like, I say my my Spanish is not perfect, perfect yet, but everybody understands me. And that's what I liked and that's what kept me going. And I think, like, any country that you move to, if they're not speaking English, you should definitely learn the language. But some people don't agree with that. I've spoken to people here and they're like, no, I'm fine without learning Spanish. And I'm just like, well... Well, you know, I think that's the thing with expat communities everywhere. I mean, even in the U.S., right, there's there's people who move here from other countries. And if they have a big enough community, they can get by without learning English. So I think, you know, people do it all over the yeah. world. But I think, like you said, like, what type of experience do you want to have? Like, what do you want to get out of the experience of living there and moving if you're not going to actually be able to connect with the people that live there? I mean, so, I mean, I understand some people might feel like, they're not going to be able to become proficient in the language. But I think that even like your story proves that from someone who was shy, you know, initially, I know we first started like years ago, you were like, I don't want to say anything. And to see you now living in the DR, like, come on. So like, if anybody's even thinking, I can't do it, like, just just listen to your story. I mean, you're like living proof that it doesn't matter how you feel right now. If you're sitting listening to this, like, oh my God, I could never do that. Go back and listen to our previous episode when Kayla first started. And I'm going to put a link (laughs) in the show notes and you'll hear the change in her and like how she has grown through her experience and how learning the language has changed um, even the opportunities. Right. So um, Mm -hmm. I think that you're inspiration to anybody who's thinking, I don't know if I should be. I mean, you could definitely do it. So and I never thought in years in years that I would ever have made this move. It's always been a dream of mine ever since I want to say in high school. It's always been a dream of mine to move to to the Caribbean. I love it how everybody's just so tight knit and close and they're enjoying life. Like they have their problems or, you know, things with finances or whatever, but they don't sit there and pout and sit there and cry. They just get on with their day and they're smiling and they're happy. They just don't let the problems of life take away their day or their time. And I love that. And I, I learned from that. It's like, wow, if I was in the States and I had this issue going on, like, I would be so stressed out, just right. shut myself in the room, just, but no, it's like, I, I just learned so much from, from the people here that they're like, life is more important. The materialistic things, everything else, it, it just doesn't matter. Like, just your happiness, your, your life, your family, especially family, you know, all of that matters. So, and it's, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think that is a, a big shift in, in mindset and in lifestyle, right? Because I think we're so used to, you know, it, especially in the U.S. and depending on where you are in the U.S., you know, everyone's like, you have to be productive. You have to be doing something. You have to be getting something. Like, what's your next goal? Did you get a house? Well, that's your starter house. You need to get the next house. Did you get a job? Well, you know, you need to get the next job. Like, yeah. everything is focused on, you know, achievement and, like, hustle culture. So, like, to to be in a place where it's just not like that, I mean, I think – you know, like you said, you just even notice like a, a shift in you and a change in how you feel when you're there. So I hope more people will think about, um, you know, making that leap wherever they're thinking about moving. If you're thinking about Dominican Republic, I'm sure Kayla would be able to help you now since she's an expert <laughs> in, in what it takes to move there. So Kayla, if folks want to get in touch with you after this, if they have more questions, how can they uh, get in touch with you? Absolutely. So my Instagram is Modena. Everything is a lowercase Modena underscore Cubana. Yeah, definitely get in contact with me on Instagram. And yeah, any questions, any questions, yes. Don't hesitate to not ask me and I could definitely just help you if, yeah, you decide to do a move. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Kayla and that if you've been thinking about moving to Dominican Republic, that this gives you a little bit more information about how to go about uh, just exploring that possibility. And then maybe you'll be like Kayla one day and you'll be living there too. Now, I promised you at the beginning of the episode that I would give you more details about our membership program, the Spanish Con Salsa Fluency Club. And we are opening the doors this week only. We only invite new members in a few times a year, and this is one of those times. So if you're frustrated with your slow progress towards Spanish fluency, you might want to check it out. 
we provide you all the support that you need to start speaking Spanish with confidence. Uh, it starts with our courses. As you know, Spanish Con Salsa is all about learning Spanish with music. So you get access to a whole suite of courses that will help you with conversation, grammar, and really all that you need to know to begin to start speaking Spanish with native speakers. We also give you the opportunity each and every week to practice speaking Spanish in a friendly and non-judgmental environment. Uh, we have weekly group conversation practice sessions that you'll be able to try out all the new vocabulary that you're learning uh, with a native speaker and with a group of other students. And these are small groups, so everyone gets a chance to talk. And everyone is super kind within our group. So if you feel a little bit nervous, you're like, oh, I'm a beginner, I'm going to sound weird. That's what we're here for. Um, everyone is at a different level, but we have groups tailored to your level so that if you're a beginner, you won't have to feel intimidated about jumping into a conversation. Each and every week, we also do a check-in where you're able to check in with me and with our team of coaches, and we really help you address any issues that you might have uh, along the way. So if you set your goals this week and you started out with our goal setting challenge, you also have some activities that you'll need to map out and also a way to monitor your progress from week to week to see if you need to make any adjustments. So we have a weekly check-in that we do um, within the membership where we help you really continue to make progress and if you do get stuck to overcome any roadblocks and keep moving forward. And we also uh, are really big on accountability. So you're able to find an accountability partner within the membership. We have several different ways where you can network and meet other Spanish learners who are just as passionate about the language as you are. So again, that's just a little bit. I can't get into all the details here on the podcast. I'd be talking for quite some time. So if you're interested and you're thinking about joining, you have, like I said, this week only. Make sure you go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash join. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash join, and you can find all of the details about our membership, okay? If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out as well. You can send us an email at team at SpanishConSalsa.com. I hope to see you within the membership, and as always, I hope something in this episode of the podcast has helped you go one step closer from Spanish beginner to bilingual. Hasta la próxima. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com. <laughs>